Northern Saskatchewan is a pristine and untamed land. Thousands of kilometres of wilderness, abundant in plant and animal life, clear water and ever-changing skies. A land rich in beauty. There is wealth deep below the surface as well. Gold, rare earth elements and in the Athabasca Basin, the world's largest deposits of uranium. It's hard to believe, but over 1.6 billion years ago, northern Saskatchewan was a vastly different place. Mountainous terrain towered over fast-moving streams. Groundwaters were rich in minerals, including uranium. Over time, the mountains eroded. As conditions changed and groundwaters could no longer contain the uranium as a solution, it was left behind to begin forming the deposits being mined today. The world's largest high-grade uranium deposit is at Cameco's MacArthur River Mine. We are going to take you on a tour of the MacArthur River operation. We will find out how the ore is mined, talk about the technology, and meet some of the people involved. Let's start with the mining process. A head frame rests over the pollock shaft, which provides access to the underground mine. The pollock shaft has been sunk 684 meters below the surface. The ore zone is located between the 530 meter and 640 meter levels. Safety is of foremost importance at MacArthur River. The environment, both above and below ground, is carefully controlled and monitored. And everyone that goes underground must wear the proper gear and equipment to ensure their safety. Hello, my name is Bill Barty. I'm a safety officer here at MacArthur River. And part of my job is to instruct uh, personnel coming underground and some of the use of the safety apparatus that we have here. So you have your light, your radio, your belt, your boots, your coveralls. Is there anything else I need, Bill? Maybe you should have some gloves. Okay. Some safety glasses. I noticed, Cliff, you wear normal glasses, so we'll just have you wear these goggles over your safety or your normal glasses and your gloves. Mine technicians like Wendy Thomas ensure the shaft is properly ventilated. My job title is a junior mine tech and I work with uh, ventilation under uh, enge mine engineering department here, here at uh, MacArthur. Being as it is an underground mine, it needs a, a certain amount of um, air to go into the mine throughout all the headings, the working headings. And, um, <clears throat> we measure the airflow. We do that every week when we come in. And there's a cross shift that does the same thing. And then we have to monitor the airflow, the air supply that uh, we get into the mine. A radiation lab keeps a close watch on everyone and everything that goes down into the ore zone. My name is Abby Burden and I'm a senior radiation technician at MacArthur River. So our job is to go underground every day to all the work sites where everybody's going to be working and sample the air and look for any upset conditions and just make sure that everybody's working safely and that they're not getting exposed to any um, high levels of radiation. This is our radiation lab. This is where we enter all our data from all like the readings that we get underground. Another thing that we do a lot of um, is scanning. So if people bring equipment up to site, then we scan it so that it can go off site. Nothing leaves site unless it's scanned. And safety is not limited to what goes on underground. The environment in the surrounding area is monitored to ensure compliance with government regulations. My name is Mark Wabansky and I'm an environment officer here at MacArthur River. My job entails being in charge of the monitoring and measuring program uh, for MacArthur Rivers. So we have a number of samples that have to be collected. Um, we have to make sure they're collected on time, on schedule with uh, what our regulators want, such as Sask Environment, Environment Canada. We have to make sure we're in compliance with them. Um, we also have to make sure that the right parameters are uh, sampled for. And then once we get our results back, we, uh, we all analyze it and try to look for trends in case 
there might be some possible environmental issues, uh, some possible effects, and then do investigate where we do see some issues like that. To get down to the mining levels, miners and technicians must ride the main elevator. I'm Graydon Taylor. I'm the shaft foreman at MacArthur River here. Uh, we're at the uh, number one shaft in, at MacArthur River. We actually have three shafts here. Uh, shaft one is where all our people go in and out of the mine, anything with material or equipment. We also take down this shaft. If you go underground, you will see lots of mobile equipment down there. You'll see scoops, uh, loaders, different things like that. Anything that goes in our mine actually goes through this shaft. Those bigger pieces of equipment, a lot of times we have to break them down to uh, make sure they fit. Sometimes they're overweight, we have to break them down to get our weight down to what we can safely move. All the communication to make our conveyances move is done through bell signals. Uh, you'll, uh, our deckman down on the floor, he will uh, ring the bell and that tells the hoistman what he wants to do. We rely on bell signals because bell signals are basically a universal language. Once you learn it, you know what's going on. So there's no confusion as to what he meant or where he wants to go. The raise bore method of underground mining is used at MacArthur River. A raise bore machine is used to drill a pilot hole down through the ore zone to the tunnel below. At the lower tunnel, a large reaming head is attached. This is a 10 foot diameter uh, Sandvik reamer here. What we do here is we punch the hole through the back of the, the raised bore. Those are uh, 12 and a quarter inch rods. Get those down and thread the tricone bit that's at the bottom of pilot bit. And then we'll thread this unit onto it. Pull it back up to the back and then the crushing action of that drill, what starts to crack the rock, and then the rotating action just grinds off the uh, material. That material falls down through these openings in the reamer, and that's where we start extracting our waste, and then it gets, gets up to our ore. The ore falls onto the floor of the extraction chamber. Periodically, a remote controlled scoop tram is moved into the chamber. The operator of the tram never has to enter the chamber and is not exposed to any radiation coming from the ore. He is able to scoop up the uranium ore, back the tram out of the chamber and then transport it to the underground processing circuit. The grinding mill reduces the ore to the consistency of fine sand. This is the first time a grinding mill has been operated underground. Mining processes are overseen in control rooms underground by supervisors and operators. A lot of work is done by remote control to ensure safety. I'm Steve Fiddler. I'm a MacArthur River Process Acting Supervisor. We're 640 meters underground in the grinding circuit control room. And we have two operators down here. One is operating the grinding circuit from the control room. Everything's, uh, we run everything from the control room to so keep down our radiation exposures. The ore is thickened into a slurry, or mud, in two circular tanks called thickeners. High pressure pumps push the slurry to the surface. The slurry is temporarily placed in storage tanks. Trucks with specially designed containers are used to transport the slurry. The trucks drive under the filling platform and are loaded with slurry. 
what we have here is a truck loading in automatic mode. The operator is uh, keeping an eye on the loading sequence from the control room. Right now, uh, totes one and three are done filling. And now what's gonna happen is the platform's gonna move over to allow the wash pipe to go down into the tote. What that does is just washes ex excess slurry off the top of the tote and gets rid of contamination. When the containers are loaded, the truck heads for Key Lake, 80 kilometers away. A career with Cameco at MacArthur River is rewarding, offering northern residents a good income, benefits, and quality time with their families during their weeks off. The work environment is safe, the work itself is interesting and challenging, and the amenities provide employees with all they need to live comfortably while on site. With the week-in, week-out schedule, you get, you get a lot of time to uh, spend with your family on your week off. You know, uh, it's, it's as much as you put into it uh, as you can get out of, uh, of having a healthy and rewarding relationship with your family. It's a, it's a good job. It's, it's a great mix of being in the office, doing some computer work, using your brain to uh, figure out some issues on site, and also great to get outside. Um, you know, who wouldn't want to be out here doing this? And uh, yeah, it's great. It's, a, it's the best of both worlds. My job here at MacArthur is really, like, I find it, it's um, interesting. I, every week I come here and then I learn a new thing. It's on, like on the job training and I like, I like it here. MacArthur River is a world-class deposit which is expected to be producing for many years into the future. The MacArthur River operation is one of Cameco's great success stories in more ways than one. Just like the Key Lake Mill operation an hour down the road, MacArthur provides a safe, efficient work environment and a range of excellent career opportunities. The success of these sites has much to do with the hard work and contributions of northern Saskatchewan residents. Together, we run world-class operations right in our own backyard.